<laughs> I do things with my spare time. Howdy folks, it's your friendly neighborhood Lime Pasta here. And you might be thinking, hey, Lime Pasta doesn't typically address the audience directly. Well, that's because this is a very special episode of Lime Pasta. Because it's Halloween! Happy Halloween, folks. And what better way to celebrate Halloween than sitting here chopping onions in my garage? Alone. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, everyone I knew was super busy right now, so I'm shooting this episode alone. But, you know what? That's not gonna stop me from making a lime pasta Halloween special. <laughs> I'll think of something. I, um, hmm. I've seen you in my nightmares. Is it is that is that is that a pumpkin from 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 Pumpkin World? I don't know what's real anymore. I'm very hungry. Every time you open your mouth, all I see is sheer terror. And I'm not sure if that's because it's you know that or the fact that I'm trying to bring back this dead meme. Give me the lime pasta episode. You 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 want a review? You you want a review? Okay, okay, I can I can do that. Uh, let, w I I can review a game. Uh, 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 aha! Yeah, let's see one of these. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna review Dark Angel Vampire Apocalypse. Yeah, Dark Angel Vampire Apocalypse. I'm gonna review that. Yeah. I've seen lazier intros to videos. Dark Angel Vampire Apocalypse is a game that actually has nothing to do with the Dark Angel TV show. Yeah, looking to tap into that fanbase? Sorry, no tie-ins here. It was developed by a company called Metro 3D, which are known for such games as Smash Cars and The Three Stooges and Arrow the Acrobat? No, no, that Arrow the Acrobat? No way! No, 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 that game was made by Sunsoft! It was for the SNES! I know, I know for a fa- Oh, oh, oh. They're responsible for the Game Boy Advance port of Arrow the Acrobat. That makes sense. Okay, nightmare averted, people! We can go home now. It was originally in development for the Dreamcast until the inevitable happened to the Dreamcast and development was shifted to the PlayStation 2. Being released in 2001, it was one of the first games to be released on the platform. Metro 3D went defunct in 2004 in the middle of developing a ton of games, including two sequels to Vampire Apocalypse. So I guess we'll never see the light of games like... The Cage and... <laughs> Pumpkin Man. Well, at least I got this to review. So, it's a spooky kind of time for a spooky kind of game. Let's dive right in, shall we? Okay, so let's make a new profile and start. And there's a loading screen. No, no cutscenes or anything. I guess that's okay if it's loading the entire world. That way it makes a cohesive experience without loading screen. It's kind of like what Skyrim does. It makes for a really, really immersive experience that- Oh, it's, it's done? Wait, 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 I'm not ready yet! I'm not ready yet! Help us! <laughs> what? What's happening? Who is talking? What are the controls? What? Are, who are these people? I, uh, okay, uh, uh, shoot, 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 stab, shoot and stab, shoot and stab, yeah, shoot and stab, man, okay, we're doing this, okay, uh, okay, shoot and stab, shoot, shoot and stab, shoot and stab, oh, okay, okay, thank god that's over. To give credit where credit is due, this is a very NES slash SNES style approach to teaching mechanics to the player. I like the fact that there's no long tutorial teaching you how to do things. Instead, it puts you in a situation where you have to press every button to see what it does in a short time span to get the hang of the controls. 
But whereas in old school platformers where they give you one enemy to deal with and allow for lots of mistakes, Dark Angel literally throws you into the middle of an intimidating looking fight with enemies everywhere. So instead of each button press being memorized out of fear, you end up just mashing every button and praying. And you know that voice acting at the beginning of the game? In one year, the Dark Lord will pass the land in shadow. Yeah, that never comes up again. The only other voice acting in the game is occasionally some of the vampires talk. And these NPCs that are labeled, they split up and go to the three separate villages and they never talk again. If that ain't spooky, I don't know what is. Okay, let's address the elephant in the room here. Dark Angel is a Diablo clone. Medieval Gothic themes? Top-down dungeon crawler hack and slash with RPG elements? Mana and health tanks that are blue and red respectively? Yeah, this game is trying to be a console version of Diablo 12 years before the console version of Diablo. That being said, it does have awesome controls. Movement feels just right, slicing enemies feels satisfying, and your gun feels really accurate. So yeah, it's the console version of Diablo. If Diablo had one class. And that one class was Barbarian. Yeah, this game doesn't have any classes. Just items that raise and lower your stats accordingly. Kind of like an action RPG style system similar to Dark Souls. If Dark Souls had one class. But also you can jump for whatever reason. And that... Okay, no, I'm not letting this one down. Why do you need to jump in a top-down dungeon crawler? I mean, seriously, what is the point of that? And guess what? That mechanic isn't used in any other part of the game as far as I know. Yeah, completely useless. And that's a missed opportunity, too. I mean, think about it. A top-down dungeon crawler with small bit of platforming with multiple levels? That'd be crazy. That would be something new to the table. But, nope. Not the case. We have a mechanic that literally does nothing. This jump mechanic is only available when you have the boots, though. Items are tamed by drops from enemies. Certain items will raise your stats based on what they are and what level they're at. Some weapons are better at killing certain enemies. Like this one is better at killing vampires and ghouls. Alright, pretty standard. This one is good against ghosts and fiends? Oh, I mean, I mean, technically, isn't every enemy a fiend? Is there some secret definition of fiend that I don't know about? There's also a weapon that's good against... C c cerebri? Okay, whatever that is. Cerebri and... Biomex in a vampire game. <laughs> what? They ain't vampires, man. They're zombies. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's talk about the loading screen for a second here. I know it's unrelated, but but okay. So it takes time to get from area to area, and it goes by a date system. And apparently, this takes place in 1670. So tell me why there are fully automatic flintlock pistols and biomechanical beasts running around? Could you imagine what 1670 would be like if that were the case? Dearest Meredith, the Spanish attacked our port city of Charleston last week. We fought hard and valiantly and were able to fend them off. But the true horror came from the Spanish Armada and their fleet of robotic dolphins with mini guns on their backs. <laughs> the sounds still haunt me to this day. Okay, so what do you do in this game? Well, you do things for people, of course. Yeah, I, I couldn't find anything resembling a main storyline, so I assume the game is just filled with side quests? Uh, okay, whatever. Let's talk to Jenkins. Okay, Jenkins, what do I do? Do battle in the wasteland! Fight all the enemies! Okay, so I'll just go ahead and travel over here to the wasteland and- 92 MONSTERS! Holy crap, that's a lot! And what do you know? I'm dead. Great! Now I'm gonna have to go back to Jenkins and buy more ammo. Okay, so we'll just buy a little bit of- <gasps> A level 5 weapon! I, c I can't afford it right now, but once I clear this mission and and c get all these enemies, I'll be able to do 40. Yes, and to save my progress from last time, I'll be able to upgrade stuff and I'll be able to slice through everything. Okay, okay, I have enough now. Let's just get that awesome gun. Yeah. Let, uh, 
Level 6? Wait, no, no, it's supposed to be level 5! I can't afford this level 6 crap, give me my level 5 gun! Why? Why? As hard as I try and with all of my struggles, my goal is swept out from under me and replaced with a slightly farther to reach goal. As in life. When that happens, there is only one thing to do. That is take life in your own hands. By remembering to water your plants, of course! It's your responsibility. Okay, so I've done like a ton of these missions for people, which consist of either save these people, or bring back the magic thing to town A, B, or C, or kill everything you see in this location. I've done this for all the NPCs in every town like five times and I feel like I still haven't made any progress. What is my goal? What am I doing? Occasionally I have to fight a Bossed, which seems to only attack West Haven for whatever reason, but every time I go it's just a giant enemy with slightly higher defense that's one or two levels higher than I am. What's the point? What am I doing? Is this all there is? Why game? Why? Well the truth is, I kept playing this game for three hours. And nothing changed. Three hours. Three hours of the same d missions over and over again. There was one different mission type where instead of just going over to the people and they say oh magically return to Hom or whatever and then float in the air and whatnot you actually had to escort them to the entrance of the dungeon without them dying that was the only difference in gameplay I got for three hours so I'm sorry to say folks but I can't complete this game again I'm sorry Dark Angel Vampire Apocalypse feels like the framework for a good game than an actual finished game. Almost like the game wasn't gonna meet its deadline, so the game was made functional instead of finished as a result. I like to compare it to the problems of Sonic 06, but the converse. In Sonic 06, the content was finished, but the mechanics were missing and broken, and thus made the game broken. In Dark Angel, the mechanics were finished, but the content was missing, thus making the game empty. This game really could have benefited from a main storyline of some sort with some sort of goal. Not even cutscenes, just some sort of goal and overarching storyline. Throughout the game, I have no idea what's happening or why I'm doing anything that I'm doing. But there are a lot of redeemable qualities about this game. The controls feel awesome, there's potential for an interesting world here if it was bigger, and the soundtrack, while sounding disjointed and like it was made by four different people, has songs on it that by themselves are energetic metal tracks that build a great atmosphere that makes you think of a Slayer album cover. If I were a billionaire, I would get the people from Metro 3D back together and give them all the time and money they need to finish this game. Because there is potential here. Real potential. So, in conclusion, I give Dark Angel Vampire Apocalypse a... Maybe play it once for about an hour. If it's Halloween, then you have a few friends over and you're bored. Out of ten. There, I reviewed the game for you. What did I do wrong? I don't want that. Well, I, I reviewed the game you wanted me to. Give me the- Sega! Oh, right. Last review I said I was gonna review a Sega Genesis game. I'm not very good at what I do. Hey y'all, hope you enjoyed this uh, Halloween special for uh, the Lime Pasta Show. So, uh, f as for shoutouts, today I'm gonna give a shoutout to Petronius. He's an English game reviewer like me, but his, uh, 
His editing quality is uh, vastly superior to me and most other game review channels around his level. So, yeah, just really good editing quality on his behalf. So, other than that, I got nothing else. Happy Halloween!